So I see countries and religions and ways of life, just like I see belief systems. Why is that that people love to suffer? Because that's what we were trained. Just think about this. We go to a church and say, you have to fear God. Everything's about fear and manipulation. Stories, you know, to believe outside yourself. But really, from my point of view, there are no gods. There are just words of human creating to find an infinite part of themselves. But there was no power in the magic feather. There was no power in the words. They were just used to wake up something within. Now that Dumbo before it fell again, it found that within and grew. You know that Super Mario is the same as the Toltec tradition? How does it feel to know that you've made such a difference in people's life? Just the magnitude of power that your work has spread across all throughout the world. I'm grateful for the changes I've done in my own life. So we begin changing that way of life and the ultimate price. It is sacrificing the love of our life. If I believe in myself, that is power. But if I believe that I'm better than somebody else, then that is manipulation, that is ego. The power of words and how it can curse, especially with kids. We just can kill their motivation to do something with just one word. Put our attention where the kids are, because the kids are the future, bringing a new mentality, seeing how we dinosaurs are living. The Avenue of the Strongest is a podcast dedicated to exploring the lives and experiences of the most inspiring individuals from around the world. Each episode features interviews with fascinating guests who share their insights and wisdom on a variety of topics, including education, impact, motivation, health, and learning. Here are your hosts, Aniette Chowdhury and Vlad Suleiman. Over the last year, 86.6% of our regular viewers have not yet hit the subscription button. Your subscription means a lot to us. It's a small gesture on your end and a huge leap forward for our channel. If you wouldn't mind, we would love to ask you if you found our channel informative and engaging, if you can please hit that subscription button. Your subscription means a lot to us. It allows us to go ahead and continue to put out great content, better guests, and as always, we will always put out two episodes per week. Thank you so much. Previously, in your uh, in some of your interviews, you discussed the duality nature of language in one of your interviews, sparking a vivid intrigue and desire to dive deeper into this enigmatic sea of words. And you said words can either curse or free us. So could you please yes. elaborate on this concept? Well, let's see if someone has the power of suggestion over other people. Like you see the politicians right now making people angry, so they begin reacting instead of thinking. In that moment, the words have power in this world because people believe them. And uh, the moment that we begin noticing that we have energy behind the words, we can conduct the energy in this life. A person who cannot conduct the energy in this life is the one who cannot control its emotions because energy mm -hmm. and emotions go together to spill out of the human physical body. So let's just say this person who's very upset all its life and then finds bad news and then goes to its house, it begins putting spells everybody, you know, saying to the little ones, why even study? You're not going to make it because I didn't make it. And in that moment, the little person has the idea, why should I study? I don't even, that person doesn't make it. And it begins to contaminate everything around that the person is going around the world, you know, angry, putting poison everywhere. And, you know, and when I noticed this person, I said, how, you know, how hateful is this person I used to say? But then I began having compassion. Why? It's because the people who cannot control their emotional poison, they're really asking for help. And they do not know they're asking for help because of their ego, how they want to be seen. In that moment, one begins to see how we're using our energy. How we're using the words in our energy. And I have a little teaching that I got when I was younger is to respect everybody's home, everybody's temple. So before I speak, when I go to somebody's uh, tradition or a different country, I begin noticing, putting attention how they live, how they converse it, converse in their world. What is what what is respectful, what's not respectful in their world? Because even in Spanish, we can say one word that's very offensive in another country, it's same language, but very mm -hmm. innocent in another language. So we have to become very aware to have respect 
So I see countries and religions and ways of life, just like I see belief systems. If they believe in certain things, I know that what I believe in is translatable if I just learn to listen what they're dreaming, what they're speaking of. And I say this humbly because when me and my brother, older brother, Michael, we would just do big kids. My father wanted to train us Toltec, but we didn't care for that. We were so into mod, um, modern culture, pop culture with uh, one, the Wonder Deers, yeah. Super Mario Brothers, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, all American things that were, we were in Mexico that, you know, really got our attention. And then and when we were playing Mario one day, my father sees us and, and goes, what are you doing? And we're playing Mario. So he watched us. He watched us in our world playing Nintendo as kids. And then he said, he threw the, he threw the, 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 the lightning bolt says, you know, that Super Mario is the same as the Toltec tradition. And like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know, and then we put our games down. So yes. To master the game, you have to first master the toy. You have to master what Mario does when he eats that mushroom, when he eats that flower, you know, and every level. And then when you begin practicing, you master the game, but you have to master the toy. So in that moment, he was translating the Toltec knowledge. It made it into liquid, evaporated from the meaning of what is supposed to be like, you know, post the word, and it translated it into Super Mario Brothers. And that from that point on, I can really understand that if we learn to listen, we put energy to the word, we can translate everywhere of our true nature, but we have to have respect. And the people who don't have respect mm. are the ones who are doing spells. But I tell you one thing, people who do spells, like wish somebody bad, they pay it 10 times bold because it's in their consciousness. Mm. So I say to my consciousness, if people are doing activity and getting, you know, that karma that paying 10 times bold, why don't they do positive things? And when they do positive things, they get 10 times paid full, but in a most inspiring way. So this is the life of the artist. It follows inspiration all the mm. time. And we can note that some words, they're killers of inspiration because they're killing their own inspiration, the artists are. So we say to that artist, that has nothing to do with me. That's another world. Why should I take this artist personal when I don't take myself personal? And it's not about we, when we feel taking it personal, it's, that we, it's not about we don't feel it. Of course we feel it. We feel the uncomfortableness, but we don't believe the story. And that is where we get our power of our, of our, our putting energy into words. Right. I think it's also very important to mention to all parents who are listening right now, um, the power of words and how it can curse, especially with kids. Because sometimes, as you said, we just can kill their motivation to do something with just one word. And that's the moment to go to the desert. <laughs> right. Um, so you, to calm your energy down, to be aware that I don't want to, you know, uh, say what I do not mean because I'm in pain. In that moment, we begin. But it is very mm. important for parents to know this because like a, one friend was saying that the most um, hurtful times that kids are more hurting is when they are in junior high because they're repeating everything their parents, their friends, TV are doing and they're giving it to each other. And this is exactly what's happening in the world. Now forget children doing this. We got 30 year old, 40 year old, 50 year old believing in, in separation in, you know, when things don't really change in, in politic worlds and you know, the things we're just waiting for somebody to be the winner and be on the winning team. But there is no winners when, you know, when there's separation, that's why we have to put our attention where the kids are because the kids are the future, bringing a new mentality, seeing how we dinosaurs are living. And like I was a kid and see my dinosaurs in my life, I could see their unconsciousness hurting one another. And right now in this day of life that we're living, you know, like in the Me Too moment, now we're getting a word that is not okay to suppress women, to manipulate women, to use women. And for the first time, it's being heard loudly. And it reminded me of my grandmother saying to me before she passed away that I'm so grateful for your generation that are going to see the return of the divine mother. You know, if I was superstitious, I would wait for a divine mother to come from the clouds, you know, and from mm. the heavens. No, she's coming through all the voices of the young people. This podcast is sponsored by Argo Prep, an award-winning educational publisher serving over a million students nationwide. If you're a kindergarten to eighth grade teacher or principal, be sure to check out our supplementary workbooks to get your students ready for standardized state testing. We cover all subjects from kindergarten to eighth grade. 
use the coupon code AVENUE for a 25% discount off of all purchase orders. Visit us today at argoprep.com slash store. You've emphasized the importance of not seeking external validation. I imagine for most of us, it's extremely hard <laughs> to not seek external validation. We look for it everywhere. At least I, I'm, I know I do, Vlad. I think pretty confidently I can say you do also. It's 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 within us, or, or or maybe it wasn't within us as a child. I don't know. But how do we cultivate this sense of self validation and not going out and seeking external validation? Well, it's interesting because when I was younger, I used to crave validation from my teachers, from my masters, from my school teachers, from my music teachers. I never got it. And I judged myself for it. I even wrote a, a, one of the best-selling books in the Fifth Agreement when it came out like a few years ago, you know, and I still didn't get it because I was waiting for the outside. But d- during the time, I don't crave validation anymore from the outside. Why? Because I have my own validation. Hmm. Many times we seek someone's validation because we're seeking our own validation. Someone times we're asking opinions and asking something that we already know so we can, you know, be assured that they know what we know that makes me sure that I know that it's correct. Yep. That I, you know, thank you for giving me permission 100%. to to believe in myself. Yeah. And you know, and in yeah. my culture, wow. they said if you if you think if you believe in yourself is personal importance. And I said, look at these mentalities. If I believe in myself, that is power. But if I believe that I'm better than somebody else, then that is manipulation. That is ego. That is mm. looking for validation for the outside. But when you feed yourself, you love yourself, why would you look for love for the outside? And this is when my mm. family and loved ones, you know, teach me, if if somebody doesn't want to be with you, why do you want to be with them? If somebody, you know, doesn't validate how you mm. your left life, okay. they will never validate the way of life because they're a different dream. The moment that you validate right. yourself, that you want to love whoever you want to love, to dress however you want to dress, to say what you want to say, it's because you're sure and you own your power. And you're not, you know, apologizing for being you. And that's a very important thing when we come with power of awareness. To not apologize, to not suppress mm-hmm. ourselves for being us. Now we do negative things, we hurt people, then of course we we ask for an apology. We should make sure that kids are not searching our validation in the first place. And it will help them in their future when they grow, not to search for external validation from somebody else. Yes, it's powerful because then you can see the whole dream of programming. It's reward and punishment. If you get the reward, you get validated. But if you live in your family with respect and kindness, you're not looking for that validation to be good or be bad. In the old days, you had the belt. You hit the kids if they do good, if they do bad, or did they do good, you know? And this is the thing about when we wake up, we can totally be aware that if we speak honestly with our kids and we're walking our path with the kids, we're teaching them to example. And 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 uh, like I remember seeing my, my puppy. We were domesticating them. We had three, and we domesticated them with, the, with, with cookies, you know? Be a good boy, be a good girl. You know, you have your cookie, but you know, okay. Yeah. You, you, and then one day I gave th- uh, three cookies to three puppies. Each one got them, but two of them eat it so fast. But the other one held it and then put it in the middle. And now the two other dogs wanted that cookie. And the dog went from the top of the couch went, and pushed the other dogs away. But then he got down on the couch. He broke it. He took a little part, but then he gave it to the other dogs in that moment. He became wow. the one, you know, right. giving the cookie. So at notice, if we talk to the little kids about, you know, the domestication, reward and punishment, that we respect them so much that we, we don't even need to do that. It can t- completely change by lead of example. But sometimes, you know, mm. you have to really understand if we don't tell our children something, if we don't tell our children you know, the situations, actual reaction, you know, someone else is going to domesticate our children. And, and like my brother says, we're not going to like that. <laughs> so it's good to give an example in our own home. And that moment when they rebel, they're going to rebel anyways. But the good, the good examples that we give to them, they're going to reflect 
in their darkest point. And I say this because that happened mm -hmm. to me. I rebelled, you know, I went to dream of gangs and things like that growing up in pure pressure. And my father always gave me examples and I was like, okay, sure, sure. But when I was in it, those words that he gave to yeah. me helped me survive, helped me, you know, not get into fights because I begin seeing, oh my God, my parents were right. They were teaching me through this. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we cannot prevent kids from going through because the jungle of life is awaiting them. The only thing we can give them is the good example. And this is when the little kids become aware and they become spiritual leaders. Why? Because they got programmed with that love, with unconditional love from that, you know, respect as an early age that somebody will say, look at this kid who's 13 or 12, very mature for his age. It's not that he's mature, not mature. It's just that he's respectful and kind. How does it feel to know that you've made such a difference in people's life? Like just the magnitude of power that your work has spread across all throughout the world. It's, it's just a great connecting point, right? Kind of like music. It's, it's a great connecting point. How does that make you feel? I don't, I don't, or, <laughs> or does that tap into your ego? And that's not a good thing. <laughs> well, the only thing I can say would thank you for your beautiful words, but the only thing I can feel is, is the I'm grateful for the changes I've done in my own life. The way that I take myself out of dreaming to enjoy this life. The other thing is just is water out of the cup. But what really matters for me wow. is always be a service because there's bad days, there's good days. But like I said earlier, when right. you begin doing good things, uh, the energy comes back to you and gets you out of those bad situations because you're not getting mm. stuck there like before with the addiction of suffering. You begin letting things go. And when I know that I'm not the only one who feels like this, I'm not the only one to feel suppressed, there's all the people in the world who also feel the same way I do because we're human. We just told a different story. Right. And this is the important thing about living our story out loud, living, you know, the life, you know, because it's contagious inspiration. Like depression is contagious. Inspiration yeah. is wow. joy, is contagious. It's so awesome. we need more of that in this world. The gratitude to be alive, simply. <laughs> now, the, yeah. I would like to continue by reading your own words that you once wrote and said. Uh, since ancient times, Taltic shamans have thought that the root of all this discord can be found in the human mind and what they called its addiction to suffering. They also thought that the time will come when we must choose to either break free from the addiction or pay the ultimate price. So if you don't mind me asking, what is the ultimate price? Well, to pay the ultimate price is to keep living with suppression. Could you imagine instead of the Archangel Michael stepping on the devil, is the devil stepping on us? Hmm. Then we get our power. We know that the devil, it is us too. And we're the angel. Then all the images begin flowing around and then we know that we're just alive. And then we begin to think in the temple that is the real temple of our mind. And then we begin hearing the echo of our own voice, even over our own suffering. We have power to change that. So we begin changing that way of life and the ultimate price. It is sacrificing the love of our life. Could you imagine sacrificing your children, your spouse, everything you love, your dog, to this negativity and then yourself? Well, that's what's happening. But that's the ultimate price. But when you take your power back, you give the best version of yourself to everybody you love. You support everybody by your presence, by your love, and you support yourself as well. Then your life becomes a living message. The question is this, what is the message that we give to ourselves and to everybody we love? If we like the message, continue. But if we don't like it, we can change it and not pay the ultimate price. But why, why is that that people love to suffer? Because that's what we were trained. Just think about this. We go to a church and say, you have to fear God. Everything's about fear and manipulation. Control, right? It, it is a setup for the patriarchy because, you know, like in my times and my ancestors, you know, the ancestors, there were no genders. There were just everybody who want to be. Yes, there is the seed and the, and the flower to build, but everybody was the expression. It was later in life where people came in to suppress and you punished for being you. You punished from having thoughts. 
you're punishing and that little by little this is how the world begins living after 2000 years of knowledge and it's even more than that but the moment that we begin noticing that we're not gonna do that dance anymore that, that we had nothing to do with it even we were born like someone say what is the secret of the Toltecs of thousand years ago i said i do not know they go how do you not know aren't you a Toltec? yes but i'm a Toltec born in 1978 <laughs> I do not know what happened before that. You know, I don't even know what happened in <laughs> much of the 80s, you know? <laughs> but I know what's happening in my life. I translate everything that's happening right now to the ancient times with the mystery books and everything. And of course, everybody like metaphors, great stories, you know, to believe outside yourself. But really, from my point of view, there are no gods. There are just words of human creating to find an infinite part of themselves now, when you find that even a part of yourself and you travel the world and see all those religions, all the mystery schools, you feel a connection, but not by the corruption of the politic world, because even religions have politics in, in, in their, in their study, the yeah. nonprofits and all these things and all these things, all these laws, you know, yeah. but the true, the true energy is about the infinite that something wakes up. So it was okay to believe in certain things until you don't believe in that anymore. That's why I earlier said. I used to drink and I used to eat meat, but I don't do that anymore. How can I sell that? How can I give that? I mm. can't. In the same way with superstition. I used to believe in some superstition, like Dumbo got a magic feather, believe he could fly with that magic feather, but when he lost that magic feather, he became panicking until the conscious in the infinite, the little mouse in that story said, it was never the feather, it was always you. The crows trick you and that's what shamans do. They trick you so you can believe in you. But there was no power in the magic feather. There was no power in the words. They were just used to wake up something within. Now that Dumbo, before it fell again, it found that within and flew. You've spoken about overcoming machismo. Machismo is the dream of suppression. And I love this quote from you. You said this in an interview, and I, I, I wrote it down. I, I need to memorize it. And he said, Machissimo is the dream of suppression. If you suppress yourself, you will suppress life. That is so powerful. So my, I have two questions for you here. For the viewers who are, uh, for the listeners who are listening. Number one, briefly, what is Machissimo? And if somebody is watching and they say, whoa, hold on, I am classified as a Machissimo. What are the first steps one can take to unlearn this behavior? Well, the first thing is that machismo is a suppression, the fake male. What they painted the fake male, that they don't have any feelings, they hurt, they're cold. But what happens is that that machismo is like a, a fungus that eats everything. It eats the people they love, it begins eating themselves, and it pushes everybody they love away because nobody loves them, respects them, they fear them, and this is the way of life they represent. And always cheating, hitting, and, you know, living with a mask. And you can see many people live like that. And it's, it's sad. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And this is the sad thing that men are programming this world to be like that. 